Hello and welcome to a new tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how, how to create a very simple bank application. We have the description here. So first of all, we're going to create a, um, a user for the banking application. The user is going to have a name and some sort of ID. Then the following thing, um, the program is going to display a menu to the user and this menu is going to contain certain options. Options would be check balance, deposit, withdraw, check previous transaction and of course exit if you want to exit the program. I'm going to show you the main uh, class, the class account because of course, every user is going to have an account and for this we have here the public class account. This class starts here on line 5 at the curly uh, open bracket and it closes on line 102 on the closing curly bracket. I have noted here the fields, the constructor and some of the methods um, that this class is providing for us. We have the balance, previous transaction, the customer name and the customer ID. We've um, put these as the customer ID and the customer um, name. We put them as a string and the balance as an int. Of course, in a, a real case scenario, this, uh, these two, these two fields might be um, double instead of int, but just for the sake of simplicity of this program, I've just used the integer. Okay, let's have a look at the uh, constructor. The constructor, of course, we, um, we've given it the name of the class and it's taking a um, string called name and a string a called ID and th this uh, name and ID they're gonna take the um, values of or rather said the these uh, private fields are gonna take the values of uh, name and ID from our constructor whenever we um, initialize a new object of type account. For this, we're going to use the keyword this to refer to the actual uh, field of the class account. So this dot customer name equals to name. So this field gets this value and this dot customer ID gets this ID assigned to it. We're then going to display to the user a message saying welcome and we're going to print in their name and then their ID and then we are going to display the menu. The menu is um, uh, declared here on the line 52 and is going to contain of course all the options that we uh, determined we need here. Okay the menu is going to have a um, we're going to create a scanner and we're going to display to the user the choices that they have and we're going to have them to press a key on the keyboard that corresponds to whichever options they want to do a would be to check balance b would be to deposit c would be to withdraw D would be to display the previous transaction and E would be to exit the application. In order to test what key the user has pressed, we create an answer. So this is a variable. This variable is going to, um, of course we created it here and we initialized it to an empty space. But here in our do while um, structure, we 
essentially get whichever answer our user is giving us and we put it through different cases. If it's A, do this. If it's B, do this. If it's C and so on and so forth. We said that if the user is going to press A on the keyboard, they will see whatever balance they have. If we have the case A, this, the program is going to display this. So these greater than signs balance. I've just put them like this. They can be really anything as long as it's going to uh, make it obvious that this is what the program is displaying. And it's just uh, it's not just some regular text that has to do with the menu of the program. OK, so if the user presses A on the keyboard, they will um, get this message balance. So greater than signs then the text balance and the balance that um, the um, account has at the time of um, uh, performing this operation. Um, then in case of the user pressing B on the keyboard, B we said is going to correspond with a deposit, making a deposit. Now, when the user presses B on the keyboard, they're going to get this um, message, enter the amount, and then we create a scanner that captures whatever um, input, whatever amount the user is going to type in. And then it makes a call to the uh, method called deposit. After it does this, and you're going to see the, in the next, um, the next thing I'm going to show you what the deposit method does. So after this deposit method is run with the um, argument amount, um, then we're going to display the menu. So the menu would be exactly this. Choose from the menu A to check the balance, B to make a deposit, C to withdraw and so on and so forth. Now, for example, let's have a look at the deposit method. The deposit method is here. So we have a void. So this method is not going to return anything, but instead it's going to perform some operations and it's going to um, essentially upload the balance accordingly. So for example, deposit X, say if this would be 10, deposit 10, in this case would be to the balance, add 10. So the balance would be equal to the balance plus uh, 10, if this A was, supposed, was 10. But of course we have to check that the actual value we pass it to this method is indeed greater than zero because if it's zero or um, a negative number then of course there's no need to update the balance and we need to display some sort of message to the user accordingly okay so if we're gonna call this method deposit with a uh, number that is greater than zero then we can update the balance and we can also um, update the previous transaction because if a transaction happens, then it needs to be somehow recorded. Okay. Then else, if this test here is not true, so if this number is smaller than smaller than or equal to zero, then we need to say error. Amount deposited must be greater than zero. Of course, you can put whatever you like as a message here, but ideally would be to be something that is um, quite informative to the user. Okay, so we were here at line 71. So we call deposit. Then in case of C, so C was a withdrawal. Of course, if um, the user presses C, we need to give them some sort of a clue that we are expecting them to enter some sort of uh, amount that they want to withdraw from their balance, from their account. Now, we create um, a scanner and whatever value is going to come from the scanner, we're going to store it in the 
uh, amount W, so amount to withdraw, that was the thinking behind um, naming this one amount W. And we're going to call the method withdraw with this amount that the user has typed in. Now, if we have a look at the withdraw method, we have it here on line 30. So we have the withdraw method, there's a void one, so it doesn't return anything. But in return, whatever is going to happen in the body of the method, we will change the balance accordingly. So if we want to withdraw whatever amount we want to withdraw, we want to have this reflected in the balance. So say, for example, if you have a 50 pounds balance, if you want to withdraw 10, so here instead of A, we would have 10. Then, of course, we want to, co to uh, update the balance accordingly and to make the balance's um, new value to 40. For this, we have to perform a check. If A is smaller or equal to balance, so if whatever we want to withdraw is smaller than or equal to the balance, so this allows us to withdraw less than what we have or exactly the whole amount of what we have. Then do this, which is updating the balance to balance minus A. So whatever you withdraw, withdraw it from the balance and then update the value of the balance to the new one. Yeah. So in our case, say we have 50 pounds. If we choose to withdraw 10 pounds, the new balance after this operation is performed is going to be 40. So 50 minus 10 would be 40. And then, of course, we want to also keep track of what was our last um, transaction performed. This would have been minus A. So previous transaction. We're going to have a look at the uh, get previous transaction in a second here. But to finish with the withdraw method, we would say that if the balance is not smaller than or equal to whatever we have available. So if, um, excuse me, that was if whatever amount we want to withdraw is, is uh, greater than our balance, then we have to print in a um, some sort of an error to let the user know that they don't have sufficient funds. Okay, moving on. You see that after, for example, after this, uh, after doing a uh, a balance check or a deposit or a withdraw, I'm always displaying the menu. For example, if um, I'm also checking the previous transaction, we after we perform this um, this method, after we uh, run this method then we also display the menu. But in the last case, so if the user would choose to press E on the keyboard and that would uh, mean exit. So if they want to exit the program, then in this case, we simply tell them, OK, we are exiting and I've chosen to write them a, a message here, kind of a confirmation goodbye. And then we break. We are out of this um, um, out of this uh, loop, the do while loop. Okay. Um, all right. Now, if the user will press anything else on the uh, keyboard, say they will press a number or something else, they will get a message saying invalid choice and then try again and we will display the menu again. Now, just to have a quick look here on line 83, we have the um, get previous transaction and this one gives us the previous transaction, um, meaning what um, what was the activity of the user on the account? What did they do last time? Did they make a deposit or did they withdraw? Now we know that if previous transaction was uh, greater than zero, so it means that whatever amount is going to be, whatever positive amount is going to be um, performed on the account, of course, is going to mean it's a deposited amount. 
if the transaction is going to be uh, a negative transaction, then of course this means that it was uh, a withdrawal um, activity on the account. Now in the app here, I've created this class called app and this, um, I will treat this as the um, main uh, as a class that contains the main method, I've created here an account of type um, uh, account okay so um, I've created here a uh, variable of type account and we are initializing it Essentially, we're calling the constructor with the values uh, mark and one, two, three, four. And those values are going to be um, injected essentially here in the constructor that takes a name and an ID. And uh, that name is going to become the, um, the variable's uh, name here, customer name, and the ID will become the customer ID. So this is going to become the name and this is going to become the um, ID. Now, if I'm going to run this, we see here the welcome message. In the presentation, in the first part of the video, I told you we want to display a welcome message to the user and some sort of a personalized uh, welcome message. And this would be this one, welcome mark one, two, three, four. And this comes from um from this one from line 16 where we say welcome and then uh we concatenate the customer name and the customer id and then we want to display the menu and this call here is this one is responsible for this one now say we want to um check the balance so i've pressed on my keyboard a i'm gonna press um enter and I get this message, the balance is zero. Well, of course it's zero because uh, it's a new account. I haven't made any deposits. I haven't made uh, anything, any changes to it. Okay, now say I would like to um, make a deposit. So I'm gonna press B and enter. I'm gonna uh, enter the amount to deposit. We're gonna make some tests. Of course, like I said, the ideal um, situation would be where you want to deposit a uh, positive amount so a 10 uh, 10 pounds or five pounds or 50 pounds whatever that might be as long as it's positive if i'm gonna press zero like i want to um, uh, to deposit zero pounds of course it's gonna give me an error the amount deposited must be greater than zero and then our menu is displayed again it reminds me what uh, are my available options Okay, say actually I still want to make a deposit, so B. So we tried it here with zero and we got a um, an error saying that deposit, the deposited must be, the amount deposited must be greater than zero. Say I'm going to try it with minus 10. So we want to kind of create an error again. And again, we get an error saying amount deposited must be greater than zero. All right, say we do want to make a uh, deposit again and we're gonna press 15, okay? So we deposited, we, di we didn't get any um, errors. We deposited 15 pounds. And now ideally, if I'm gonna check the balance by pressing A on my keyboard followed by enter, we see that the balance has updated to 15. Now say we want to um, check the previous transaction. So we want to uh, press D um, and it tells us deposited 15. Okay. Now if I want to do a withdrawal, I'm going to press C on the keyboard, enter the amount to withdraw. Say I want to withdraw zero. If I want to check balance again balance is of course still 15. now if i want to do another withdrawal say i want to withdraw 20. 
keep in mind I have 15 available. So if I want to uh, withdraw fifth, uh, 20, I get an error saying insufficient funds. And now if I think about it, of course, it wouldn't make sense to um, allow to withdraw zero. So probably here we could in the, um, in the withdraw method, I could uh, put yet another um, yet another um, test to see if the amount is zero then again you know the amount should be greater than um, one greater than or equal equal to one because otherwise it doesn't make sense to make a withdrawal um, to allow a withdrawal of zero okay so and the last um, part here, we had the balance of 15. We tried to take out 20 and we got the message of insufficient funds, which is perfectly correct. Now, if I'm going to check again the balance by pressing A, of course, we have a balance of 15 because nothing changed. If I'm going to want to, let's say, what to do? Withdraw. So that would be a C. We want to withdraw three. Okay. Or ideally, here we could say after any withdrawal or deposit, we should uh, give also the user a uh, message uh, stating the new balance. Um, okay, like, okay, you deposited three and, or you withdrew three and your new uh, balance is um, so and so, whatever that much, um, that will be the, the new balance. Now, if I'm going to check the balance again, of course, we have a balance of 12. If I want to check the previous transaction, previous transaction was a withdrawal of three. OK, and now finally, if I'm going to do the exit. OK, so we choose E 